All right, here is an example of a problem for the first LO in chapters five and six, where we would have equilibrium. So the scenario is that we have two masses connected by a light cord over a frictionless pulley. One of the masses is on an inclined plane and the inclined plane has an angle of 30 degrees. We're told that the coefficient of static friction between mass A and the inclined plane is 0 0.65. If mass A is five kilograms, what's the largest that mass B can be while the blocks remain motionless? And we're going to assume that if they move, that mass B will fall. There's a lot of things in that last sentence that help us set up this problem correctly. For one, by looking at the maximum mass that we can have, we're really implying that the force of static friction is going to be at its largest. So. Remember that our, our force of static friction is, is less than or equal to mu sub s times the normal, but because we're looking at the maximum mass, we're going to say that our force of static friction is actually equal to that maximum value. The other thing that we're, gonna, we're saying is that we're assuming that if there is motion, that mass b is gonna fall and that's going to help us determine the direction of the force of friction also. So I'm going to label the forces acting on these different objects. So there's the normal force on A, and here is the weight. Um, here's the tension. And because we're assuming that the impending motion would be for mass A to move up the incline as mass B falls, then the force of static friction has to be in this direction. And then we also have the forces acting on mass B. And so now we have all our forces labeled, just reminding you that this angle here is 30 degrees. And so now we're ready to apply our laws of motion. Let's look first at mass A. Looking at the forces in the y direction, those add up to be zero simply because mass A does not move in the vertical direction. I did mark our x and y axes. Remember the y axis is perpendicular to the plane of the inclined plane. And that means that the normal force is right along that y axis. So we have normal force acting up, but we have the y component of the weight acting down, which is going to be given by mag cosine of 30. So our normal force is mag cosine 30. We're going to need that in order to figure out the force of static friction. If we look in the x direction, we're also assuming equilibrium. I'm going to say that up the incline is positive, so we have tension minus the x component of the weight, which is going to be mg sine 30, and then minus the force of static friction. Remember that I said that because we're assuming that we're looking for the maximum mass we can have, we want the force of static friction to be at its maximum. So it's mu s times the normal. I'm going to substitute in for the normal force, it's mg cosine of 30. So that's really all that I can do right now. So this is sort of my final expression, looking at mass A. So now I'm going to move on to mass B. Mass B only has forces in the y direction acting, and they are zero because we're looking at a situation where we have equilibrium. So I have T minus the weight of mass B equals zero. This actually tells me that the tension has to be equal to the weight, which makes perfect sense if it's not gonna move. I'm gonna take this expression for T and substitute in here, and that's gonna allow me to then solve for the mass of B.
I notice there's a G in every term. Let's get rid of it. I notice I'm not so I'm not putting numbers in yet. But if I get everything that doesn't involve mass B on the other side, I see that I'm actually in a good position to solve for mass B. Now I finally put my numbers in in the last step, so I only have to use my calculator once. Hopefully I do it, did it correctly, because I got a mass of 5.31 kilograms. And so this is how we can use the conditions for equilibrium to solve a problem. Um, and we did an inclined plane, we used some friction, so hopefully this is a good example for you.